Hi, Jason with Tormach. We got a video for you today. We're gonna to show you how to assemble and calibrate your Heimer 3D sensor. So we've got the next generation sensor here. You can see it's the large face. It's the one that I prefer to use just because it's got the big face, nice and easy to read in the machine. As you can see, there's kind of two pieces here. We have the sensor itself and then we have the TTS holder. Um, if we look at the end of the Heimer, you can see there's four set screws that come around the outside. And this is what actually centers the Heimer on the center of the axes. So one of the calibration steps that we'll need to do is we'll put this, once it's assembled, we'll put this holder together, we'll put it in in the spindle, and then we'll actually rotate the Heimer. And we'll use these four little set screws to center it up and get it to spin true. Um, the second calibration that we need to do is to get the needle on the center. So this is controlled, this whole dial face is sitting on four different set screws. So we have two on the top and we have two on the bottom. So we can just change the position of that dial by moving these set screws. You really want to keep in mind that this is a, it's, it's a dial indicator, so it's real fragile. When you're adjusting these, you always want to loosen one side, then tighten the other. And you don't need to, please don't over tighten it. Just be real gentle, real light touch on it is more than enough to keep it functioning and working properly for you. Um, so to adjust the needle again, it's just, we'll adjust these top and these bottom four screws and we'll just be moving that whole dial face up and down to get that back on center. So let's get this thing assembled quick. There's just a single set screw on the TTS holder itself. Let's take a three millimeter Allen wrench here and we'll just lightly snug this up. We don't need to go crazy tight on this. It's not, it doesn't spin on its own. It's just, just enough to keep it from falling out. And then from here, we can go ahead and load it up into one of our machines and start to indicate it in. So we got it loaded in the spindle. I'm just going to grab my dial indicator, just a magnetic base. I'm just get it on the tip of the tool here. So you can see we just got our indicator sitting around the end of the, the Heimer probe. And as we rotate this around, you can see that we have some run out. So there we're at about you know, 14 and, you know, it's about three and a half thousandths of total, of total indicator run out. Um, when you're making adjustments like this, it's always easier to move it straight with the set screws. These are all, you know, they're at 90 degrees. So if you can push it straight one way or the other, it does make the indicating go a little quicker for you. So you can see we can find our high spot here and that puts us with this set screw facing us. Um, so to adjust this, we need a, a two millimeter Allen wrench. And you always want to loosen and then tighten when you're making these adjustments. You don't want to just over tighten and, and damage the component. So we'll just real lightly loosen this up. And we'll just barely snug this. We're actually going to crack one of the sides loose as well, just so that we can move it a little freer. And we'll just kind of work this around as we go. And as we do this, we just always want to be making sure that we're keeping one side loose as we tighten the other. And you can influence the indicator reading if we push and pull on the spindle real hard. So when you, when you are rotating this, you just want a real light touch on it. So you see here we're down to about a thou and a half. And now we're in between two of the set screws here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen both on the back side and I'm going to try to move it half with each screw. So I'm going to move this one to use up just a little bit of that number and then I'm going to move the other one about an equal amount. Just trying to keep it running true as we go. So you can see there we got it right down to about a five tenths run out. And the magic question everybody always wants to know is how good is good enough? And that's a very individual question. Um, if you're making components and they have a thirty thousand dollars, you know, a couple thou run out on this or variation might be plenty, plenty good for what you're trying to accomplish. But if you're really trying to hold some really tight tolerances, um, you know, obviously the tighter this, the more accurate that this is set up and calibrated, the more accurate your setups can be. So we always want it as close as you can get it. And as we get it real close, we're just going to kind of start tightening up the set screws as we come around. 
So we've just find what side's high. Now we've got it real close to finish, so we're just going to snug them up as we go around. But we want to make sure that we don't we don't drive the run out any out any further. So that one's snug. So there you can see we've got the run out. It's not quite moving. It's a little less than five tenths run out. Which I'm more than happy with on this. Should be should work just fine for all of our needs. So I'm just gonna go around again just to make sure that I've got all my set screws snug. I don't have any that are just sitting real loose. So now that we got the indicator calibrated for runout, we can actually set the dial gauge to zero. And you can do this in the machine or out of the machine. Um, whatever's easier for you. I'm actually gonna take it out so that we can show you guys a little bit easier here on the workbench. So as you can see our, our long arm on the indicator, we're sitting about, you know, about half an increment off. So it'll just be a real light adjustment. I don't know which way we need to turn this here. So we're just going to go ahead and make a turn. And you can see this is about a one and a half millimeter Allen wrench. Um, so when we tighten the top side, it's moving the indicator to the right. So we actually want to go the other way. So I'm just going to back these up again just a little bit. And you can see as I loosen and take the tension off of it, it's actually coming right back to zero. So you see then we can just walk it right on and get it right at zero. Um, this is one of those things that when you get your Heimer and it's new, you'll definitely want to check the calibration. It's always worth a couple minutes of your time just to make sure that it's zero and everything's set up and ready to go when it's new. And then if you break one of the tips off or you drop it or if it gets damaged or something over time, you know, it's just something that you can real quickly identify when the indicator arm isn't on zero anymore. Now we got our indicator arm right at zero. So everything should be calibrated. We've installed the holder, we set the run out and we've set our dial at zero. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and find it useful on how to calibrate your Heimer. Um, please watch our other YouTube videos here and subscribe to our YouTube channel.